All right, what is going on guys? So today we're back at the Cranberry Bogs flying the Skydio 2 Plus. If you remember, the last time that we came out here, the Skydio 2 actually dive bombed into the water. Now we've got the brand new Skydio 2 Plus today. This is redemption time for this drone. And I figured we'll just uh, track the car here. So we'll tap on the car, have it track. There we are. All right, so I've got my buddy Steve driving here. And the last time we kind of stayed out in this open area and then took it into a little bit more of a difficult area. So right now I think I have my height floor turned off. Yeah, so I'm going to enable this height floor really quickly just because there's someone up here. Someone just passed by. So once we pass by him, we'll be able to turn that height floor back off. So I'm, of course, doing a screen recording so you guys can see kind of what the drone is doing, what the drone is thinking. You can see some of the telemetry. I will say that uh, in the early, I guess, beta version of the app that I was using, the live feed was a little bit, I would say, choppy. And now the live feed on this phone is a lot more smooth when connecting to the beacon. All right. Once we get around him, we can kind of start ripping. Cool. All right. So we'll go ahead and turn the height floor off. Disabled. And now we have the full tracking potential of the drone. So I figure because we're in the car, we can kind of back the range up here. It looks like the uh, motion tracking is kind of losing the car already. There we go. So, I mean, I don't know. We can we can speed it up however fast you want to go. I, I think the last time that we were doing this tracking, what, we were probably going like 15 miles an hour? Probably. On a straight if the road was not too bumpy. Yeah. So this is like easy peasy for the drone out here because there's so much land. There's so much open space. Let's go ahead and put it on the right side of us. <laughs> Look at it. It just like totally rips right around. And then we'll put it in front. So I feel like tracking a car is a little bit easier than like tracking a person. Hold on. The drone's already starting to lose us a little bit. <clears throat> There we go. It's picking us back up. So go ahead. Yeah, just go straight. We'll put it behind us here. So when I say that the drone is losing us, it's not necessarily losing our position, but it seems to not understand like where the actual car is at. So right now, if you notice, there's kind of like, I almost want to call it like a Sims icon. There's like a triangle icon on top of the car because the drone is able to track the vehicle itself. Like it's able to see the car but if you notice like right there it said the gps tracking it seems like the drone loses visual of the car and then falls back and relies on the actual gps signal from the beacon um so this go around we are flying the skydio 2 plus which doesn't have any improvements in terms of tracking over the original skydio 2 it still has the same camera system it still has um you know the, the same obstacle avoidance i guess features if you will uh, but the only differences we have is the increased range as well as the longer battery life. So those are two, I would say, niceties or two, what do you want to say, convenience features that you get, right? So we'll be able to fly this drone for longer out here. And of course, we'll be able to make use of that better range, which I can already tell right now. I mean, there's barely any disconnects in the drone itself. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll put it on the left side and we'll try to do one of those uh, dronies. I remember in my first tracking video, I tried to do a drone and forgot how to do it. So... We'll put it to the left here. Lost us a little bit. Let's back this range up. I feel like it's right on top of us. All right, so let's go ahead and try to do the droney. So we will double press the Skydio button. And there it goes. Oh, that's actually really cool. So it's still able to see the car and it's kind of pulling away. I kind of wish it was, we were facing the sun. The sun was at our back, but cool. Why don't we make a left here? Yeah, we'll make a left. And it still can see the car, which is pretty impressive. You notice the triangle above. So it's going to fly back down towards us. That was pretty awesome. Let's try to do another one because now the sun is kind of towards our back. So it's returning to us, which is great. It says on the beacon right now, returning. We can't even change the... Um, there we go. Now, now we can kind of change our position. All right, so we'll put the drone behind us. You know, there's one thing. Whenever I'm flying the Skydio 2 using uh, motion track... I never get worried that it's going to crash or lose us. <laughs> All right, so let's do another drone here. Boom. Let's crank that speed limit up. Go faster. Yeah, 
Cool. Um, which, uh, where do you want to go? Left. The scenery out here is just beautiful. So I'll say that the drone is doing fairly well uh, with the tracking. I mean, I think that we we pretty much expected that in a nice open area like this. It's just like when you get to the faster speeds, that's when you kind of wonder if the drone will be able to keep up. Like I noticed that when we're driving faster and we put the drone in front of us, it has a more difficult time. You want to go? I don't think I want to go right. Okay, yeah, just go straight. So if we go straight and if we kind of go to the right, um, we can kind of go towards that back area. Yep. Now here's something interesting is like when I did that first tracking video following the car out here with the Skydio 2, which that, that must have been like two years ago now that we've done that. Um, when I did that, I'm not sure if I had the height floor enabled or disabled. I haven't gone back and looked at that video, but regardless, um, I think it's going to be really interesting once we get into the back area with some of the lower trees to see how the drone performs. Now, I showed in the beginning a quick clip of the actual crash. The drone seemed to just like dive bomb down into the ground or into the water. And I think that the general consensus amongst myself and amongst people that were in the comments was that the drone might have seen like a reflection and gotten confused and didn't know that it was water. I mean, you know, that sounds like a pretty logical explanation to me. Um, now, in the beginning, I almost felt like the drone. Oof, nice. <laughs> In the beginning, I almost feel like the drone was like right on top of the car and was leading to some almost like tracking errors. But now the drone is a little bit further away. It kind of gives like more room to breathe, which is nice. Um, let's see. We can also change the height. So why don't we come down a little bit lower? Cool. There we go. Coming around the building. Oh, that shot looks awesome. <laughs> you know, the colors on this camera always impress me, which is really great. Okay, so why don't we try and move it over to our left. There we go. You know, it's crazy to think that it's been two years since we did this initial tracking video. So in terms of like the extra range, uh, I think that that is a huge benefit with those brand new antennas when you are, you know, flying with a remote controller, but you also get the added benefit of increased range using the beacon. So. They actually have a new transmitter inside of the beacon, which also gives you better range when using the beacon. So, I mean, really in this scenario where the drone is like right on top of us, I'm almost never worried about losing connection. But the one thing I would be worried about is like if I do a droney and the drone flies away and I'm moving away from it, is it going to be able to catch up and return to me? So that's why that improved range is definitely good. So we'll make a right here, right? Yeah. We came in from the left. Um, and all right, so here's something interesting we were talking about is that these, these, uh, these, I guess the bogs, the actual bogs themselves are frozen. Uh, and we wonder like, if we do have another error, I'm going to put the drone behind us. If we do have another error where the drone goes into the water, is it going to hit the ice and stay, or is it going to fall down? Hold on one sec. It's catching back up to us. So right now it's using the GPS to try to find us. Come to a complete stop real quick, just so they can kind of catch up. So it looks like it's trying to use the GPS to track and it lost sight of the car. It's just kind of hovering there. So you see, it's, yeah. it relies on the GPS. And I just wonder if because of the shadow and because of the black car, it's kind of hard to pick it up. Hold on, I'll give it one second. Change the height and the range, maybe? There we go. All right, picked us back up. All right, so let's change the height. Whoa, one sec. There's a tree right there. <laughs> All right, go ahead and move forward. Which way? Do we go left, left or right? Yeah, okay, left. so go left. Are you sure? Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> All right, just go left. That's cool. We might be able to sneak right here. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. You want to go right? Um, Let's go straight. It's cool. No, I think this is it. This is it. We're okay. Good. It's going to take us up here. Wow, look at that Look at that view right there with the ice. Yeah, this is wild. Yeah, so half of half of the uh, the the bogs are frozen, half of them aren't. But here's the thing. So I kind of like touched the ice, and it's a little bit thinner. So I don't know. I mean, I think that if the drone were to get confused and want to go down into the water, it might just go right through the actual ice itself. Hopefully we won't have that problem. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, it provides a little bit of contrast here with the ice, so maybe it'll help it see a little bit better. Go ahead and go a little bit faster. If possible. So it's been pretty cold out, which is nice because the actual road itself is a little bit harder, but it is still a little bit soppy just from all the rain and snow that we've had. 
the colors are just unreal. I'm gonna do another droney from here. Slow down just a little bit so that the uh, so let's see, we'll do the droney. Oops. There we go. Yeah, pump that speed up. I'm sorry, I was pumping the speed up on the drone, not the oh, car, okay. but whatever, it's cool. So see now, losing a little bit of range on the actual uh, phone itself, like it seems like it's kind of choppy, like it's starting to lag, but we do have a great signal coming from the from the beacon itself. And now it's ripping over towards us. So it's doing like 26 miles an hour to try to catch up, which is great. Okay, yeah, this does look about where we were going, which is yeah. nice. Yeah. We're trying to recreate the same exact route as last time, just so that there's no inconsistencies. Although you've got to imagine that over two years, the autonomy has gotten better. And of course, the Skydio 2 Plus is just a better drone. I mean, it doesn't really have many improvements in terms of tracking, but it is all around new and improved. So the one issue that I continue to see is that it relies on that GPS tracking, which is great because if it didn't have the GPS tracking, then the drone would continue to try and find the car and it wouldn't be able to follow it. But, you know, this is a little bit, maybe I'd say annoying just because the car is now not centered in the frame. I mean, I'm only looking on my phone, so maybe it is centered properly, but it just kind of looks like the drone is flying out there. Let's go ahead and try to put it over to the left side. I mean, so the last time I had a black SUV as well. I think the lighting conditions were fairly similar. There we go. I picked it up. No, it was, it was really dark overcast. Yeah, I was it? Okay. Time, yeah. And it was but late, I'm, late in the day. Yeah, I'm just wondering if... I'm just wondering if with the... Um, I'm just wondering if with the black car and the shade, Shadows, yeah. it's kind of hard to see. Yeah. This car is also not built for this type of off-roading, but... No. <laughs> All right, so we'll put the drone behind us. We'll also lower our height. As we're kind of coming into an area where... Uh, <laughs> So this is like where the drone started to have a little bit of issues last time because we, of course, don't have this wide open, you know, there we go. And the one thing, like, I feel like every time I'm doing a Skydio tracking video, it's the winter time. And so there's no leaves on the trees. And that then also just makes it even more difficult for the drone to, you know, avoid obstacles. So there, it's got a tree in front of it. Let's see. We'll go up and over. What's it going to do? No, is it going through? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I think it's gotten stuck. Uh-oh. All right. I think the drone is now stuck in a tree. No. Not in a tree, but it's just hovering there. Uh, no, you can stay right there. All right. So you see, this is what happened last time. Got out of the car to go back and get the drone. Look, okay. It's starting to make its way down. Yeah, there you go. So it's making its way down by itself. Lower the height. There we go. So here's the thing. The last time I came back to get the drone, it just decided to go and dive bomb down into the water. It's flying backwards. It's flying away from me. You're flying away from me. Now it's staying there. It's probably because it's following the GPS. All right, let me quit out of motion track. I'll run and grab it. I could also just steer it too. So steer it back over towards me. The steering controls are really intuitive. There we go. Sweet. All right, so we'll just fly it back towards the car. I think I said this in my video with uh, where I was flying the drone with the, with the remote controller. It just feels so intuitive. Like, it just feels like there's no worry of crashing the drone at all. Okay. So raise the height up just a touch. It's not understanding that I wanted to track the car, so it's not picking that up. See, that's the one issue. It picked me up as I kind of came by. No problem at all. There we go. Now it sees the car. So, boom. All right, we're tracking now. Go ahead. So that's another thing, too. I mean, is it a pain that the Skydio sometimes gets stuck? Yeah. But it also, I mean, Skydio makes it really easy to just kind of go back, pick it up where it's left off. I mean, I could also use, like, the drag feature, the drag and drop feature if I wanted to, but... Just using the steering function through the beacon or through, you know, your phone is super easy. This is where you had it to the left when yes. we were on this section. Yep. And when we got up here, when it gets a little bit thicker, it yeah. came up and over, went all the way over to <laughs> yeah. that side. Yeah. And it was coming in this side, and then it lost us again. Uh-huh. 
So this is like, this right here is the area where we, I mean, this is where the flight pretty much ended. I think that no, we kind of... It actually crashed in the water on the other yes, side. Yes, so we came through this set of trees. I remember you stopping the car. Yeah. I went back, and I mean, I was really impressed that the drone made its way through. Uh, <laughs> and then it kind of did its own thing, you know, shot over to the side and plunged down into the water. <laughs> okay, well, that, yeah, that happens right up here. I, I'm noticing, I mean, you know, just... When we're going through areas of bright sunshine, the drone has absolutely no issue tracking us whatsoever. Yeah, so this area it was like totally riddled with with issues. I mean, it was yes. it was it was right here where I think the drone was a little bit further away. You kept driving up, and right to our right, right here is where the drone went down in the water. Yeah. <laughs> All right, keep driving. I, I don't want to be around here much no, longer. No, no. <laughs> this is a bad spot. <laughs> But again, I mean, the drone is, is doing a great job at tracking us. Uh, and, you know, I will say that during that time back there, I actually kept the drone a little bit closer in terms of its range and height just so that it would be able to <laughs> continue to follow us. So, like, now we can kind of move our height back, push the range up. Yeah, yeah there is, we go. This is really beautiful back here. Push the range up. Nice. Let's go put the drone to our right. See this body of water to our right. I'm not not very trustworthy of it. It already ate one drone. Now I guess a backstory behind that. If if you maybe didn't see that entire video, <laughs> uh, we were driving out and we found someone with waders, and he actually went in. He got the drone for us with a poker. I remember I was like I, I was like it went down right in this line because I put a rock exactly where it was at. Luckily, this guy in Waiters was able to go in, grab the drone for us, uh, and I don't think that there's anybody out here in Waiters. I guess it's 36 degrees out, so not many people out here. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to get that lucky today. So every time we go past a tree, it loses us just a little bit, but it's continuing to keep up with us because of the GPS tracking, which is nice, and it picks us up right away. So that's interesting. I mean, it's like, you know, you, you consider the drone is using... Um, you know, the camera in order to track a subject. The drone is using the camera in order to track a subject, and if there's dark shadows with a dark object, it might lose it. So once we get up here, I'm not really sure. I know. Where you to see, go. We, we haven't come this far yet with the drone. I mean, we've been flying for a relatively long amount of time. I mean, I don't, I don't know how long this flight has been necessarily, but we still have 38% left in the battery. So it's continuing to follow us. It looks a little bit snappy, like it's snapping on my phone, but I have a feeling that when I look back at the footage, it's actually gonna be nice and smooth as it follows here. Whoa, it starts to get really yeah, tight. So I'm gonna, you wanna I'm go gonna left, here? left here? Yeah. Okay, I've so let's put it behind us. Side. Now, something I've always mentioned in regards to you know the Skydio is like you wanna put it in an area where it's going to succeed. One sec, might be losing us a little bit here. GPS tracking. Go ahead. You can, you can keep driving. I think it's going to continue to follow us down the path here. So with the GPS tracking, it's nice that it at least keeps up with your, your car there because it picked us up nice. Oh, look at that. It's going to zip right up to us. <laughs> That's great. So this is where we start to have some of the thinner branches. And once we get out, you know what? I'm going to put it over to the right side of us. around and then I'll boom put it to the right so yeah I mean I've always talked about putting the drone in a place where it's going to succeed I mean you've got to realize that it's not a miracle worker <laughs> How about right front on this side yeah oh yeah you know what I haven't done any oh the drone is really low to the water do you see it yeah, oh yeah it, it, oh no hold on <laughs> hold on I gotta I'll, I'll raise the height I'll raise the height <laughs> Come on, part, man. part two down to the water no, oh my no, no, gosh no, 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 no. Did it go? Is it still on the side? Where is it? Uh, it's in it's in our front right, so we're good. Okay. We're good. I I just raised the height out of precaution. So here, look. So we're we're against the sun, so it's it's kind of hitting the shadows, and you'll notice that it's just using the GPS tracking. It's not able to see us, which is kind of a bummer. But again, you just kind of understand the limitations of the drone and what it can see. We're at thirty percent. I probably want to get down to like twenty five, and then we'll land it. Man, flying over that water has got me concerned. <laughs> Oh, man. Here, let me put it to the back right. Maybe that'll... No, oh, there, it picked us back up. Yeah, I'm not really sure where to go. I guess we only can go left here. You want to go left here? Yeah, it's cool. Man. So 
so this is like the ultimate beacon setup using you know the uh, the remote control I'm sorry the beacon controller with the phone because it gives you a sense of like the framing and it also allows you to um, you know just better change some of the some of the directions of the drone and that's why I kind of hope that in the future if Skydio creates another beacon I mean I understand they wanted to make the beacon fairly slim and small so you can fit inside of your pocket but if they could build a lot of the features into almost like a touchscreen display on the beacon I just think that all around it would be really nice um, let me put it, let's see, I actually like where it's at right now, although I feel like it's just right on top of us, so let's push the range up, or push the range, oh wait, I'm doing it the wrong way. I've never been on this part of the bog. Nah? Nope. Yeah, so I mean, just like in terms of like a beacon 2... <clears throat> for like a Skydio 3 or something in the future, who knows? I mean, I would love the ability to have almost like a full display touchscreen on the actual beacon itself. All right, we're at 24. You know, I just want to land the drone now, probably, okay. just because we're a little bit lower. Further. Yeah, just, just where it's more trees. open. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, look, the drone did good tracking. I mean, there was like that one hiccup, but again, I think that we kind of knew going through that area that it was going to be a little bit more difficult. Let's get right up here. Yeah, stop. perfect. That extra battery life is nice, though. I mean, I guess I couldn't really gauge how long the flight time would have been with the Skydio 2. I don't know how we're going to get past that puddle. Oh, well. All right, let me jump out here. All right, so thank you guys so much for watching. I think that there was probably a good amount of people that were just waiting for some sort of uh, redemption, I guess, with the Skydio 2. You know, I've never actually used the steering function here on the phone, but it works really well. So yeah, there we have it. That is uh, Skydio 2 tracking redemption here out the Cranberry Bogs. I think I have a good idea for another video where I can come out here and have like dueling Skydios follow the drone and maybe the open space. Maybe that'll be cool. But at least we're leaving today with a functioning drone. Skydio 2 Plus did a good job. If you guys have any thoughts on this tracking video, let me know down in the comment section below. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.